How many of you guys have heard of the uh, the concept of leaky gut? Well, if you haven't heard of it, we're going to discuss it right now. If you look at the skin on your arm right now, you have that same sort of skin lining your digestive tract from your mouth all the way down and out. And if you can imagine taking sandpaper and rubbing it really quickly up and down your arm, what's going to happen? You're going to irritate your arm. It's going to get red. It may even start to bleed a little bit, won't it? Well, that same thing can happen in the lining of your gut if you're feeding it lots and lots of things that can disrupt the natural bacterial colonies in the digestive tract. You might say, Jade, what are these foods? Well, before I tell you these foods, the first thing I want to tell you is that th these foods do not have a negative effect in all people. In fact, some people can eat these foods and not have any issues. But the ones who do have issues can suffer from leaky gut. And technically, these foods are the, the big ones that have a lot of lectins and saponins and things like that. So I'm going to give them to you. One of the biggest ones is gluten and gluten containing grains. Other foods, the nightshade family of foods, white potatoes, tomatoes, eggplants, those kinds of things can be very irritating to people's digestive system. Hot and spicy foods, um, other types of grain products, uh, any kind of food allergy, eggs, dairy, peanuts, those things can oftentimes be an issue. Now, how do you know if this is an issue for somebody? For most people, those foods are not going to be an issue at all. So don't be one of these people that jumps on the bandwagon that gluten is the worst thing ever and it's the next devil and, you know, it it's just should be avoided at all costs. If someone has thyroid issues, however, you want to consider possibly eliminating these foods because what might be happening is you get this leaky gut effect. So you see the gray here at the top and the bottom, and then you see this middle here. This is the lumen of the gut, the hollow portion of the gut. So when you eat food and digest food, you're going to break those food particles down and you're going to have little food particles like this little sphere here or big food particles like these diamonds. Now, if the gut is packed closely together, notice over here that only the little particles can pass. These big diamond shaped particles would not be able to pass into the blood. But when, it, when the system gets leaky like this, notice how this can pass. And notice how this can pass into the bloodstream. When that happens and these big food particles get into the bloodstream, let's say this is a gluten protein. Now what happens, the body sees that gluten protein, treats it like it's a bacterial invader or a virus or a fungal invader and attacks it and makes antibodies against it. And then what happens is you have all these antibodies being hypervigilant all over the body looking for proteins that look similar to this one that came in through the digestive tract. And guess what can look similar? Proteins sitting on the thyroid gland. And now what happens is these antibodies start attacking the thyroid gland and you have autoimmune thyroiditis called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. How many of you guys have seen or heard of Hashimoto's thyroiditis? Oftentimes, if that's going on, then you know you have leaky gut issues going on. You have leaky gut issues going on and you have to do something to repair that. Okay.